Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and salutations to you. As always, I hope you're fantastic. My name is Kluger, and today I welcome you to the Dreeg's Evil Eye Warlock, uh, revisit? We'll call it a revisit. Uh, the background behind this video being I posted a video of this build a little while back at a much lower, not a much lower level, but a comparatively lower level, and it was... One of the videos, probably the video that's drawn the most vitriol out of any video I've ever done on YouTube, which is saying something because generally this is a really great community that we hang out with. Uh, but for some reason, this video caused a lot of controversy to the point where I did ban a couple of uh, people in particular who were really getting too far into the whole uh, flame war, I guess, for lack of a better term. And some people really questioning some build choices, like, got a little out of hand, all things considered. But you know, we're just playing Grim Dawn, it's not that big of a deal, but I wanted to try and address some of the issues that <coughs> that was spoken about in that original video. Um, I'll try to remember to either link it down in the, in the description below, um, or otherwise just search for Driggs Evil Eye and you'll uh, see it as a video on my channel, and we'll just go and kill some stuff. Um, so there seemed to be a little bit of a question around sort of the, the skill choices as well as the secondary mastery choice for a, a build doing Driggs Evil Eye. Um, the whole idea that... Uh, I kind of ended up going with here is that Arcanus is really great support for caster skills, or sorry, caster based builds. And um, so, you know, essentially all the damage we're doing is coming from Driggs Evil Eye and its accompanying skills. And then Arcanus is really great support in terms of uh, extra offensive ability, reduced cast cost, higher cast speed, you know, all that sort of, sort of good stuff, as well as some extra defensive things, uh, namely Maven's Sphere of Protection, as well as, of course, um, Mirror of Arioctes. Both are really, really fantastic. So, um, I've revisited this build. I've got got it up to level 65, which still is not like super mind blowing high level. And in honesty, we should probably be closer to ultimate than we are right now. Um, this character is a little over leveled because um, essentially this was the same character that I used with uh, Stevens when we did our. Uh, walkthrough of the whole game together and we kind of repeated some areas and did all the side quests and did hidden path basically there's a lot been a lot of repeating with this build which means it's slightly over leveled probably to, from where it should be um, but nevertheless i mean we're still not so far ahead that uh, elite isn't scaling with us so we've got uh, enemies of reasonable difficulty to deal with as you can see and look the build's a bit on the squishy side and part of that uh, if i can reveal is because of probably invested my tribute points incorrectly, this being really one of the first builds I ever did in Grim Dawn. Um, not one of the first ever, but like it's a much older build compared to the more recent stuff you've seen. Um, so I did probably put some of those points in places where they shouldn't have gone. Um, but that notwithstanding, the, the build's still kind of on the squishy side. Uh, but I think has really great damage and crowd control. As you can see, we're just like chomping through enemies at a rate of knots, which... It's kind of why I posted that build in the first place. I mean, I didn't profess that this was a perfectly created build, but I think it does pretty dang well. Has Still has decent survivability because of... Um, what's this skill called again? Blood of Drake, of course. <laughs> um, as well as the Arcanist defensive stuff. So, um, anyway. What we'll do... You know what, before we pop in here, we'll, we'll talk about uh, some of the skills. So... This really hasn't changed much at all since last time in terms of build, uh, sorry, point distribution. The one thing I did remove is Saleil's Witchfire in its entirety. I think overall the detractors for, for this skill, for this build, were right. Uh, overall, what it offers probably isn't really worth it. I mean, it's worth noting that vitality damage does come sort of incidentally um, to... Uh, from the skills that we pick here in Occultist, um, for example, Vile Eruption has 897 damage, uh, vitality damage offered there. Does it come anywhere else? I don't really, I don't think so. I think this one, if you choose to, no, I'm wrong. And uh, Doombolt, of course, deals a pretty decent amount of vitality damage. Um, so there is an argument for investing at least maybe into the Saleo's Witchfire um, main skill, not so much second right, even though it does give you. Um, where yeah, vitality resistance and it gives you flat fi vitality damage as well. I mean, it's worth bearing in mind as well that Driggs Evil Eye also takes uh, weapon damage via blood burst, so that's kind of worth noting as well. But anyway, it's probably uh, incidental to the main point. <laughs> so look, I did remove them because it's probably you don't get enough vitality damage um, overall when you're going for a poison 
acid damage builds um, to where it's worth investing in Celales. In this particular instance, if we take a look at what Driggs is dealing out, um, acid is up to 2.6k uh, and poison at 2.6k as well, whereas vitality is at 897. Um, the thing is, the, the plus for going vitality damage or a secondary vi um, damage source of some kind is that, you know, for example, this build, if you come across um, the varied amount of poison-based enemies, you get uh, poison heroes, uh, you get those poison zombies, I can't freaking remember what they're called, but look, there's a decent spread of things that are fairly resistant to poison, so having some form of secondary damage source is not the worst thing in the world. Um, so that was probably partially the thinking at the time, also partially naivety, let's be perfectly honest, like I said, it was an earlier build. Um, but I think on the whole, yes, not investing in Salales, if you're going for this specific build, uh, is a better way to go. I'm just going to kill this hero here. So as you can see, I think the crowd control is pretty dang solid. We can get pretty squishy at times. Oh, this is so annoying. There, there we go. Alright, dead. But look, that was a fairly quick, clean kill, I would say. They lost a lot of health from us just standing around. Come on, clear up, would you? Okay, cool. Now, oh, we'll go back in here. So besides that, nothing else has really changed. I've got vulnerability up to 10 out of 10. Um, you don't get extra minus um, poison and acid resistance from going over that, so I've left it as such. Blood of Dreg will probably end up getting maxed. Aspect of the Guardian might as well. Um, one or two people were going, why the hell haven't you maxed Doombolt? Uh, one, because... It, <sighs> It doesn't do that much damage because we're not doing, we're not focusing on vitality and chaos damage. Ergo, this is gone. Um, but I probably will get it close to max eventually. We're only level, level 65 right now. Uh, it's probably worth getting at least a few more points into there because it's pretty, it does a pretty juicy amount of damage. So it's a good nuke to have handy. But it doesn't um, solely align to the build. Sorry, it doesn't specifically align to the build, but it's still worth having, I, in my opinion. And. Um, but it's a poison and acid damage build, so you could honestly take it or leave it. Um, Arcanus will pretty much be looking the same as before, and just taking it up to this point here, because mental alacrity, um, to the people who are mentioning that um, Arcanus may not, may not be the best choice, uh, it's worth considering mental alacrity, because we are basically spamming Driggs, Driggs Evil Eye all the bloody time. <laughs> and look, at one point, 2% uh, casting speed at minus 5 energy skill cost, but that'll be worth more points, so we can spam more Driggs at a lesser cost. Um, Mirror of, uh, sorry, Maven Sphere is a really good investment because this is a squishy build, so having points in there is really, really good. And uh, Maven's, uh, uh, sorry, Mirror, <laughs> good god, I got them mixed up again, is a really good panic button to have there um, if we're dying. And of course, Inner Focus, because lots of offensive ability and spirit really helps with what we're doing over on the Occultist Tree. I mean, while here as well, if I have spare points, I might even put one point in the Scandrous to get the crit damage from uh, Elemental Balance because we do a decent amount of crit, so that might be worth um, investing into, but we've got plenty of other stuff we can still work on for now. I'll definitely at least max possession, maybe take that to ultimate levels, because that gives us a lot of tasty goodness. And look, that's really it. It's quite a simplistic build. We've got, of course, Curse of Frailty and Vulnerability. I think I mentioned that. Um, sorry, I'm talking a little bit too fast. But the whole idea is debuff their poison and acid resistance, and then nuke the crap out of them with Drig's Evil Eye, and then support yourself with Blood of Drig. And that's really it. Keep yourself alive with Mirror and Mavens, and you're good to go. And there's not much else to it. So it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a simple build. So um, I think really what it comes down to, the crux of the conversation here is that it's not a vitality damage build overall. So the investment in Salales probably isn't worth it. But you still at least get it. That's such a crap drop. Jesus. It's still probably worth at least noting that the secondary vitality damage is still very handy to have, so um, it's not something to be sneered at either. So, yeah, I hope that clears at least some of the air. Um, it's it's a quite a viable build. It still needs some tweaking, and I haven't done an absolute optimal job of leveling it up, but, um, you know... That's just how it goes. Some builds don't go perfectly, and I didn't want to completely re-roll it, so uh, I think it's still viable to get through ultimate if I can find some decent gear and um, may, uh, get the defensive ability up, get the HP a little higher up, and it should go fairly well. Um, we'll talk about <coughs> devotion as well. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I'm fine. It's, again, fairly straightforward investment. I don't remember if I covered this in the last video, but uh, mostly going for Chaos and Eldritch. I've got Rat. And then I've gone across to Hawk, and I've got Empty Throne as well. And those 
anything else. I've got Viper as well, and all that combined has allowed me to unlock the Manticore uh, constellation, and that gives us Acid Spray, which is a really nice poison, and Acid Nuke, which also does reduce uh, resistances and targets armor, which is really, really sick. Got giant, uh, Behemoth as well, because Giant's Blood is a nice extra survivability thing that uh, is bound to uh, Maven's Sphere, which is always on, which is really sweet. And all that bundles up into being able to get Affliction, uh, which I'm currently working on. So, Vitality Damage, ironically, <laughs> but it also gives us good um, Poison Damage, and I think Acid Damage somewhere further along the line. Gives us some Resistances. Yeah, there's some Acid Damage there. And Crit Damage over there, and the skill Fetid Pool, 33% chance when hit to mostly do Poison Damage and slow our targets, but it also does give some Vitality Damage. Um, I know this kind of sounds contradictory to what I was talking about before, but like I said, the incidental vitality damage is not bad. Um, but also, the other there's other really great benefits from that option there. I mean, I could also go down the abomination route, which is purely poison and acid. If you go down uh, the left arm or his right, our left arm down here, and this skill tainted eruption, it's pretty brutal. Um, I should still have points for that one, two, three, four. Yeah, easily enough. What does this give me, though? Not that much. So I'd have to figure out how to get there, but it could still be feasible. But, yeah. Wow, a lot of words. I feel like I'm starting to get to the point of rambling. But, as you can see, having tweaked those just little things here and there and just grinding up a little more, um, I found some more appropriate gear, which makes this build work in a little more of a viable sense. And we'll take a quick look at that now. Uh, so gear-wise... Um, I'm rolling with an Empowered Mutiny, uh, which is all Poison and Acid stuff, and also gives us plus to Driggs, Evil Eye, and Vile Eruption. That's the main reason for keeping that. It's pretty damn boss. I've got a Mark of Drig on that as well. My offhand is Fiend's Resolve, which is Acid, Chaos, and Poison damage in all, um, it, in buff form. <laughs> Extra health, defensive ability, um, attack speed is not pertinent, but the skill cooldown reduction is good, um, plus... Skill, plus skills to Blood of Dragon Aspect of the Guardian, as well as Fiend's Resolve as the skill, um, which is this... No, it's not that. What am I talking about? 100% chance when hit, um, and that buffs our damage output, gives us uh, a bit of a health restoration as well. So that's pretty dang sweet. Uh, any other gear specifically worth mention? Probably uh, the Mark of the Apostate, which is a really cool drop that I got. Um, acid Vitality and Poison Damage being buffed. Um, as well as some damage reflection, chaos resistance, energy region, and toxic gas cloud. 15% um, chance on attack, which does a bunch of poison damage and uh, causes enemies to fumble and all that sort of thing. Um, other gear, I mean, most of the gear is just either selected to help our defensiveness or to buff poison and acid damage, of course. So nothing else. Well, there's probably, I mean, what else is worth mentioning? Probably this, Empowered Miasma Robes, is a decent choice. Um... Whoops, considering the level of the build. These are just kind of generic defensive Imperial hangouts of the Drangul. Leg Plates of Valor, because defense. Um, I've got a Blight Relic, because that's the best I can do for right now. It gives plus one to all skills in Occultist, and a decent skill uh, in Blight, which absolutely uh, gives us a stack of extra damage, and again, chance to obfuscate our enemies' attacks. So, yeah. This, in conclusion, is a... I think still a very viable build. I will fully admit to making some minor mistakes uh, on the previous sort of... I, I labeled it a guide, probably incorrectly. Uh, I've changed the title of the video to be a build idea. Um, but it is a good build, I think. There was only some minor issues there, and I think once leveled up to maximum to where, you know, you've got um, Doombolt, boom, to the level that you want it. You've got decent gear so that you're not too squishy. I think it's a great build. It's really, really fun. The um, crowd control, I think, is really super duper because Driggs fragments off like that. Plus all the uh, passives, either from Devotion or from, um, from granted skills from items, make everything really, really boss on the whole because all these extra, like, poison or acid damage uh, dealing, <coughs> excuse me, clouds are absolutely shredding everything. As well as debuffing, which means, you know, there's this whole sort of symphony of debuff and damage, which makes this build really, really cool. So, there you go. I mean, look at all this. Look at all this craziness. And it's critting at, at a decent clip. There was a wall there I couldn't see. <laughs> and there you go. So, anyway. I mean, this is probably a lot of talking to only address some minor issues, but... 
the original video, yeah, really did kind of attract some some ugliness from um, the community at large. And I'm not trying to point fingers at everyone you know, who happens to be watching this video or whatever have you. There was just a minority um, of detractors, and it got a little bit out of hand. It's, it's turning into bloody a uh, philosophical video more than anything else. Um, but, I'm, I mean, I'm just addressing this m more specifically at the Grim Dawn level, just to say, hey, look, this build can still work just fine. And yeah, I mean, the before, the before and after, if we can call it that, of what I'm doing here versus what I'm doing there is really not all that different. Um, but, I mean, this build shreds. I think it's really, really cool. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I think it works really well. Leave your comments down below if you still think I've got it wrong or if you think this build is cool. Let me know what you think. I'd love to have a chat about it. Um, if you want to see more content like this, of course, you're more than welcome to subscribe. And I hope to see you around really, really soon. So, without further ado, everybody, my name is Kluger, and I hope you all have a great day.